Hello everyone, this is Melanie from Melanie B's Creative Studio and welcome back to my channel. Be sure you click on the subscribe button so that you do not miss future videos because I hope to have a lot of new content for you this year and you know you don't want to miss any of that. The plan for today is to take a method I brought to you a few weeks ago called the PBM Flow Technique, which is the Paint by Number Flow Technique and try to implement it onto a canvas. We've talked about this and I've demonstrated it on a shipper board. And the way this method works is we take a paint that is already really fluid, like a shipper paint, and we thin it down a little bit with either water or flow aid or a diluted flow aid. And we mix it up and we make it so thin, like a milk consistency that we can fill in a cell and we can puddle it up and it will allow us to easily and quickly fill in our area. But it also provides better opacity with paint, especially our transparent and our translucent paints. But what I loved about it is that it really gave me a three-dimensional finished look and it went a lot faster than I was expecting. My intention was to paint with this method for my shiver paintings and my board paintings. But in a situation like this one, where I've got this beautiful painting from Made For You, which was a collaboration video, and it had a lot of transparent or translucent paints because it was a very warm palette. And I'll insert the photo here of this particular project then I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to test this method on a canvas. And a lot of my group members and my YouTube followers have been asking, would this work on a canvas? So why not test it with this particular project and this particular painting since I'm you know, possibly gonna have a lot of issues with transparency with these paints. So that's what we're gonna do today. What I have done already is I have primed my surface with a clear gesso and I used the Liquitex clear gesso because it had the, the rough tooth to it, but I only primed it up to about right here. So I did three fourths of this canvas with the gesso and I left a fourth of it without. And you're probably wondering, why did I do that? I wanted to test the method without any gesso at all because I wanted to see if it was even worth adding clear gesso because I have a theory about this. I was thinking because our texture on a canvas is very smooth and slick, I had a speculation that our paint might run out of our lines more if it didn't have a toothy texture. So I thought I would test it and see if it doesn't run outside the lines then you wouldn't have to use the gesso. But if it does, I wanted to go ahead and test that too. In addition, I had already tested in the prior video where I brought you the unboxing and the review of this kit, I had tested two different gessos and this canvas with no gesso. And I determined that this particular canvas painted better with this Liquitex gesso. So if I was gonna paint this piece the regular old fashioned way, Liquitex was the best gesso for this particular project. So that is why I went ahead and did it three fourths of the way with the Liquitex. Let me tell you about what tools I have over here and then when I zoom in, you will have to wonder what am I using during the process. I'm gonna go ahead while I've got it and just use this little mixing tool they've included with the kit that they sent me. I thought this might be a nice little tool to have for thinning out our paints so that I don't have to thin it in the paint pot. That way, if I decide that this method doesn't work for this canvas, I have not contaminated the entire pot with flow aid or diluted flow aid that was too much, you know, that might affect the paint quality so I'm not gonna mess up the entire pot worth of paint. So I'm just gonna dip it out, mix it up, see if I can get it to the right consistency and then use it from here. I have my bottles of diluted Flow Aid and straight Flow Aid here. I also have 
a multitude of stir sticks. Now, as far as brushes go for this method, I'm going to be using the 2 0 spotter from the Melanie B's five piece detail brush set that I have over at the supply shop. This is probably thus far my favorite brush for doing this flow method. In addition, I have my digital swatch guide that I had printed on a printable canvas and that's where I had tested my paints when I had done the unboxing video and that's how I know which ones are going to be trouble. I do want to mention that these paints are beautiful. If you use the three shades of gray kit, you can paint this kit with the regular method without having to do the flow technique or whatever uh, with a primer of grays, no issues. But because I did test that here and I did show that in that original video. But I, I did want to test this method and so that's why we're doing this today. I forgot to mention over here to the right, I also have a rinsing cup with water and the three-in-one brush cleaning system to keep the brush in a beautiful point while I'm working. So I'm going to scoop out some of number five because it was the most transparent color and you see how creamy their paints are they're really nice consistency and let me go ahead and just drop like i'm gonna have three drops and that might be a lot because i'm not used to doing it in this small amount so this is going to be a trial and error process Normally, I'd probably put this in a separate pot. And you can always just do this in the lid of the pot if you want. Once we figure out if this works, you can, you know, you can do this in the, in the paint pot. I'm actually going to leave it just at this consistency and test this first. You notice I don't waste the paint. I will actually pull that off the side and use it. I'm going to be testing a spot that is fairly large, but it's also got smaller areas. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this brush. And I will time lapse some of this because the method is actually something I taught in a prior video. So I'm not going to be teaching the method as much as I'm just going to be testing it. See how I'm already seeing like a huge difference in how the board takes the paint. Uh, this is running outside the lines, you can see, just automatically, which is, you make making my eye twitch. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just running because the board painting kind of stops it in its tracks. So when I put this on a board, Wherever I put the line is where the paint stops. So as if, let me, let me just say that, you know, if I put a line there, if I add a big blob of paint, the paint doesn't go past the line. But here, even if I had a big blob of paint on my brush, it was running outside into the little divots, right? And I'm not real worried about it because I know if I go back with like number 14, I can fix it. So I, that's why you don't see me like freaking out. Oh my God. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to panic because I do want to cover the lines too. This is a very transparent color. Look at that big blob, right? People would freak out. I'm going to go ahead and touch it. I'm going to try to cover up the lines, but normally, you know, that would be maybe an issue. It, it's not giving me the same feel as it would if it was on a board. So I guess it's a little different because there is no gesso underneath to hold it in place. So I'm definitely curious to see if the method works. 
and it holds it in place on the gessoed side. That's an interesting test. So it does work, definitely works. Now, a lot of people might be thinking you got it too thin or whatever. You guys make it the consistency you want. Again, I'm playing with something here and a recipe of Flow Aid that is unfamiliar because I'm not used to putting it in thicker paints and whatnot. You can play with it and get it as thick as you want. So this, you know, is maybe a little thicker and, if I needed to add it to get more opacity or something, you know, I could use less flow aid, more flow aid. I wouldn't use more flow aid, but you know what I'm saying. So you can play with the, uh, the amount. All right, so I'm gonna rinse and reshape my brush. And then I'm gonna take this over to the gessoed side and find, now I'm a little afraid to move this, honestly, because I'm afraid that is gonna just start shifting and go outside the lines and, cause there's nothing to keep it from moving and going into the divots and outside the lines and all that if I start to move this canvas. So like if I bump this, <laughs> because this has a plastic surface over fabric, it's not gonna saturate into the surface like a board painting. That is why this method works so beautifully on a board painting, but not so beautifully necessarily on a canvas, and that's why we're testing it. All right, so I'm gonna find a number five over here on the gessoed side, and as carefully as possible, I'm gonna slide this canvas. So of course, number five is all the way over here on the opposite side. I'm not mixing anything new into this paint. I'm just going to do the method as I was doing before. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. And you guys, huh, I I hate to say it, I hate to say it because I was so looking forward to not having to gesso <laughs> my canvas. Oh my gosh, you guys, do you see it didn't budge outside the lines at all? Like, ah! So I was really hoping it was not gonna like be a difference, but I'm afraid there is a big difference. It went down, I didn't have to worry about it moving, it stayed where I put it. And yeah, I'm, I'm really thinking it was easier to put it down. Now I'm gonna wait and see how it dries and see if it starts leaking into the, you know, areas beside it. If it does, then I wouldn't waste time gessoing my entire surface, but the drying is gonna be the, you know, determining factor. So let me let this dry. And then we're gonna take a look and make a decision on whether this method works on a canvas. I'll be back. I let both of these dry for a long time. 
and I came back and like hours later and I would check to see, you know, if it was still sticky or how it felt, how it looked, if it still looked wet. And it did take them a while to dry. So if you're going to paint on a canvas, so if you're gonna to work top to bottom, left to right, you're gonna really have to be careful not to go back and bump where you've worked or touch it because it's gonna stay wet for quite a long time. The gessoed section stayed wet longer because it wasn't saturating into the canvas like this one was. So I'm gonna take photos and insert them as to how they look after they dried. And then I'm gonna kind of give you my opinion of which one I would do, whether I would gesso or not on your canvas if you're gonna use this method. What I did find interesting was after this dried, the gessoed version had a odd like matte finish on the center but it had a slicker finish on the outside. And I'm not sure why that was the case. If I seal this piece when I'm done, that's not gonna be noticeable. It's not even a big deal, but it's like, it was strange because it has like a halo effect of a slicker finish and then a matte center. Go figure, I'm not even sure how that worked. Over here, it was a smooth, slick finish, just completely. It did run outside the lines on the non gessoed portion and it didn't give me the best opacity or coverage as far as the number so i can still see the number five through that you know which would mean i'd have to go back over this and add more of the paint on top now on this one this one is almost completely opaque so you know it's kind of like oh it may have taken longer to dry, but I got a better coverage on this side. So let's move into the final analysis of this particular method on this surface. So wrapping this up, my final opinion on the PBN flow technique on a canvas is that it can be done, which makes me excited because that gives us options on how we want to paint our canvases. Now, whether you need to prep your canvas surface with clear gesso or not, I believe is gonna be up to you. And you're probably sitting there going, damn it, that doesn't help me. <laughs> that doesn't help me, Melanie. <laughs> For me personally, I'm gonna clear gesso mine. I, I really am. And you're probably like, what? Because of a couple of reasons. And I wasn't sure when I did this first that I was gonna go ahead and go through the you know trouble of doing the clear gesso but i'm going to tell you and this is not a sales tactic or anything now that i've kind of developed this little squeegee tool that is on the supply shop and i don't think i mentioned it at the beginning this is how i'm applying my clear gesso and it took me five minutes to put on the liquitex clear gesso on my canvas so it's super fast for me to do that application, it doesn't take much time at all for me to apply it. So I'm not spending a long time putting the gesso on. The only thing I'm doing is waiting if I wanna wait, you know, and if I wanna hit it with a blow dryer, we're talking about maybe another 10 minutes to get it dry and then I'm just not the type that's gonna jump right into this because I'm always doing something else while I'm waiting for it to dry. But having said all of that, I liked that I didn't really have to be super careful when I was filling the cell in. So I liked that. So that was kind of a positive for the clear gesso for me. I liked that it gave me better coverage with my paint when I used the method with the clear gesso side. Although it did take longer to dry and it was sticky longer with the clear gesso, I still liked the coverage better. So it kind of canceled each other out for that. I don't want to go back and put a second layer like I would have to here. So that was definitely a plus. Since I have the varnish, especially included with this kit, as I mentioned in the unboxing and review video for this particular kit, it's not a big deal for me to take that varnish and seal this whole piece. So even though I had that little halo effect, 
wear this dried matte and that dried glossy, I'm not concerned about that either because I'm gonna get the overall finished effect that I want by sealing this. So even if I didn't get the varnish that was included in the kit, I'm still going to finish the piece by sealing it. I used to not seal my pieces because you don't have to seal an acrylic painting, but I've decided to start sealing only because I feel like it just gives me an extra layer of protection and I don't know what's gonna happen to my pieces, you know, my artwork after I'm done and gone. And if my children want them, I want the artwork to be preserved for generations. So if they wanna hand them down to my grandkids and so on and so forth, or if somebody, you know, gets them in, in a yard sale, they're protected, okay? So the bottom line is I'm gonna seal this piece and it's gonna have an overall layer that is consistent. So this part doesn't bother me. Having said all of that, you be the judge of how you want to work on your piece if you choose to do the paint by number flow method. And I just don't want to have to put second layers. If I'm doing the paint by number flow method, I'm doing it because I don't wanna put multiple layers. That's the whole purpose of me doing it to begin with. So if I'm using that method, I don't wanna go back and put a second layer on that. That's defeating the purpose. Over here, if I have to go back and add a touch up on that number, whoop de doo I'm, I'm good with that. Pop, I'll take a paintbrush, put a little block right there on the top of that number and I'm done. It's not a second layer, it's not a second coat. It's just a boop right over the number and that's it. I hope this answered some questions for you guys who were curious about whether that technique would work on a canvas. I think we've proven that it will work because this canvas does have a different surface. I would work on it flat. I just feel like because it is not absorbent like the board paintings are, you're really gonna have to you know, work on it on a flat surface, in my opinion. And again, we know about opinions. <laughs> Everybody's got one blah, 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 the rest of that. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> try it however you want to, but that's kind of my advice and suggestion is, you know, try to probably keep it flat because your paint is either gonna puddle at the bottom if you're tilting your canvas or it's, it's going to maybe run because it doesn't have that absorbent surface to draw in the paint. So just keep that in mind. All right, everyone, that is it for today. I hope you guys have enjoyed this and found it informative. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can click the little button over here somewhere in that corner and that will allow you to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little notification bell that is down there and that will give you notifications of when I upload new videos. Join me on Patreon, Facebook, on my Facebook group. Thanks as always for watching. I will see you back soon.